I'm back at it again working on the FC 150. Now recently I took the FC out of the actual garage and put it back in the driveway, mainly because I need room in the shop to work on things, but also I wanted to see just how well the brake work and all the other components that I put together were working on it. Well, as always, as soon as I pulled out of the garage, something went wrong. I felt the rear suspension pointing up and down. You could feel it because the car was kind of rising up and down as you put pressure onto the transmission and through the drive shaft. So when I got a little closer inspection, I noticed that the drive shaft, when it engages, is actually pushing upward and downward on the rear differential. Well, now this is really common. This is why drag racers use traction bars. This helps to keep that rear differential planted and it doesn't allow it to tilt upward or down. It also helps with traction under hard acceleration. Now in my circumstances, I don't need that sort of setup with a traction bar. What I need a traction bar for is because the leaf springs are a rather flexible leaf spring because I want articulation. It actually, when you wind up the drive shaft, creates an S shape with the rear leaf springs. And this is unfortunate because when you mash on the gas pedal, the differential nose is up. And then when you mash on the brake, the differential nose is down. And this is mainly because uh, there's nothing keeping the drive shaft from going up or down. Of course, left and right, it can't move because the rear leaf springs are affixed left and right to the frame, but there's nothing affixing it upward and downward. Traction bars are actually relatively inexpensive and accessible through a lot of large parts warehouses. In my case, I like to manufacture anything that I can here on site. That makes it so that one, I get to learn it, two, I get to say I made it, and three, I get to make sure that it's made to the top quality that I can for the same amount of money that I'd spend elsewhere. Now, a few components that you need to do this at home. You're gonna need some uh, tubing preferably some quarter inch wall or some really heavy duty tubing. Please don't go and buy some from Lowe's. This was picked up at, uh, I think it's uh, Metal Superstore. Uh, it's the only metal store here in my area in South Carolina. It's in uh, Lyman, South Carolina, pretty far from where I am, but it's the only place to get it, so that's where you get it. Next, you need the bushing inserts. These are weld-in bushings. They come in three pieces. Uh, you have your two rubber bushing components, which are going to be what fits inside the cup. You have your sleeve to help you from crushing it. The rubber caps go into the, the actual piece, and then, they, of course, the piece goes in like that. And then when you squeeze it all together, you put a bolt through, and it's a, it's a half-inch bolt, so it's a pretty hefty bolt. Once those are welded in, uh, this is the top bar or the main piece. This is a triangular shaped traction bar. It'll be double point mounted on the differential and then single point with a shackle in the front. So this is the top bar and you've already seen, you already see here that I welded those into the bar. Now, a couple of things to think of when you're doing this. This is part of your suspension system. So if you have a flux core welder, Unfortunately, you're probably not going to be able to do this. I mean, you could, but yeah, you're probably not going to be able to do it. So go buy yourself a nice uh, shielding gas welder, something 220 or larger. That'll help you burn through this metal nice and easily. Um, and then you'll need, of course, the ability to cut the cope inside the metal. Now, what a cope angle is, is essentially taking the round portion of the tube and cutting a notch out so that it abuts nice and cleanly to the next tube. Now a 90 degree notch is relatively easy uh, when you're talking about these fixtures that you do this with, but when you start doing stranger angles, that can be really difficult, especially in this case where this bar is going to be very similar to this. And then of course this angle on this upper piece here is going to be rather steep. So I've got to cut a really big cope inside the, the tube. That means I'm going to be going through it like a 10 degree angle through the tube so that I can get a nice even seam all the way around that joint. Now the only way to do that is to have a proper 
tool, a coping, a tube coping tool that allows me to adjust the pipe to specific angles. So what we're doing to this coped angle is stretching it a little and then making sure that the bar is going to fit in there nice and all the way across so that we get the angle we want. And there we go. Now we have our connection at 10 inches at the end. So we're going to go ahead and tack it together. Now again, before welding, I do like to clean the metal. I have some non-chlorinated brake clean. We'll just spray it down to get the oil that they have from the metal yard off. Flammable, who knew? There we have it, all finished up. So this is the front portion. And then of course you have the rear portion, which there will be a, a bar that goes between the two just to create a little bit extra strength in it, but it's already super strong. You obviously wouldn't want to put it together like this, but all nice and strong. And that welded joint's not going to go anywhere. And once you put a lick of paint on, it'll look all pretty again. And then it'll be ready to go. And there you have it. This traction bar is almost done. I've gone ahead and welded, of course, all the components together, put the bushings in, and got it preset. Now we're just going to mock it up with the uh, actual differential bracket and the front cross member bracket and make sure that this is going to hold the car nice and steady. Now, one interesting thing, and I'll kind of divulge this secret. If ever one of you out there purchased a vehicle that I worked on, you would find all sorts of weird little, what do they call, Easter eggs in every build that I do. This particular one that you hear rattling around is a nickel from the 1950s. And the reason that that's in there is a long time ago, um, an old timer told me about a Chrysler Imperial. Uh, one of the presidents or vice president of Chrysler had a car commissioned uh, right off the line and had a lot of components changed, AC, interior components like bucket seats, all sorts of add-ons to the car. And one interesting thing that that individual did is he added US coins in place of all the washers. Now I started doing this about maybe six years ago on my um, first Volkswagen Beetle that I ever worked on and I replaced it with actual original German coins. Uh, at the time my, my father had brought back coins from a trip so I actually used it for just little things throughout the car, things that nobody would ever notice. But if you look hard enough in any build that I do you'll find all sorts of little Easter eggs like coins, initials, different types of hardware meaning Sometimes I'll use brass hardware, sometimes I'll use stainless steel hardware. It's just a variety of things. It's not because I don't want to use one type. It's because sometimes I just like hiding things throughout the car that only I know about. And well, it's a conversation piece for somebody who's super interested. And when you go on to sell a vehicle, it carries with it kind of a story, something that somebody else can pass on in the future. But this is so far, we're going to do one more video in a couple of days about installing this, mocking it up, and then showing you what exactly it does. I appreciate you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.